Hi everyone, welcome back to IQI Power Chats, our series of chats with industry experts. In today's chat, we will be discussing about risk management and we have with us uh, Sandeep Navdare. Sandeep is a risk management professional currently working uh, with an asset management firm as chief risk officer. He has more than 15 years experience in the BFSI domain out of which 10 years is in risk management. He has worked with various brands like HSBC Global Asset Management, HDFC Standard Life, India Bulls Asset Management which is now Grow Asset Management and Mahindra Manu Life Investment Management in their risk departments. In some of these organizations he has played a pivotal role in setting up the risk management framework and policies. He has also earned his uh, FRM Charter from the Global Association of Risk Professionals, which is also known as GARP USA. Well, welcome to the show, Sandeep. Thank you so much for joining us, and we are very eager to hear you in this uh, today's chat. Thanks a lot for inviting me here, and <coughs> looking forward for the healthy chat. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, first, we would like to uh, know uh, what has been your professional journey and. Uh, how, how did this calling of being a risk manager uh, came into it? Okay. So, uh, I started my uh, professional journey 15 years ago. Right. Uh, so, when I started, I, I basically joined a bank as a back office operations executive. Right. And uh, uh, I spent somewhere around four years over there in the operations role. Right. And uh, then uh, from that operations role, I got an uh, opportunity to move into risk management department on project basis. Yeah. So I thought, okay, let's uh, experience what kind of profile this is. Uh, so when I started doing that particular work on project basis, which was like a normal work, normal BAU or analyzing certain reports or basically preparing certain MIS, which helps basically the CRO uh, in their day to day activities. Right. Uh, so when I started preparing those reports and doing those activities, I found that a kind of a interesting profile and which was not, not like a monotonous profile which I was performing like operations. Uh, so I thought, okay, uh, if I want to uh, do something in my career and want to grow and blossom in my career, Absolutely. this is the kind of profile I was looking for and okay. uh, uh, which I found connect with. So basically I found my Ikigai uh, <laughs> by uh, say you know, risk management vertical. So uh, I thought okay let's give a chance to this and then uh, after that particular thing uh, in last 10 years I think I have spent in risk management vertical. Uh, I have tra traveled across uh, various brands uh, which you have mentioned uh, into risk management function. Right. Uh, so that's how my journey is and that's how I landed into the risk management profession. Wonderful and risk is definitely a, a growing field and I'm sure you are enjoying your journey. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? So uh, next what I would like to understand is like what is a quote that you live by? Okay, uh, so what is the quote I live by? Uh, in terms of risk, uh, uh, I, I think you must have heard about this quote uh, somewhere else also. Uh, not taking any risk is the biggest risk of the life Absolutely. and this is the quote I live by. Uh, you might be wondering that a risk management professional like me is quoting such kind of a thing and uh, asking the people to take a risk uh, wherein it should be otherwise around uh, or other way around. Uh, but this is uh, what is the reality of the life. Uh, so we all face some or the other risk in our life and we deal with it and we should be doing it. Otherwise will not be able to achieve any great fortune or uh, great things. So uh, the point that I want to make is uh, right. we should take risk, but we should take calculated risk. Absolutely. And this is what we should live by. And this is how I also means this is the quote I live by. Absolutely. Yeah, very well said. So the next question actually that uh, I would like to ask is, uh, so what are the opportunities in this field? Okay. So before I uh, speak about the opportunities, I, as I said that we all face different kinds of risk in our life and we face it. Similarly, uh, companies also face different kinds of risk right. uh, during the course of their business. Absolutely. So to manage that risk, uh, of course, there would be a person who would be required 
to deal with that particular thing and uh, it's a subject matter expert who would be required so risk management professional would be required be it be an insurance company be it be banking company or be it be pharma company or anything right so each and every company deals with risk they need to manage the risk so there are ample opportunities available in the field uh, in the field of risk management right and uh, so you may be thinking that uh, it's a new term or maybe a new jargon that has suddenly come up in the market uh, because of uh, the certain episodes that has happened in recent past but risk management is not a new vertical it was always there but we have not provided that much importance to this vertical Absolutely. in past Absolutely. but nowadays uh, looking at the recent episodes and the kind of complexities business are entering into risk management is gaining importance and whatever opportunities are there currently it is only going to multiply right. it is not going to reduce so there are ample opportunities are available in the field of risk management so the uh, the natural question after that i mean since you have uh, very well articulated about like the opportunity i mean risk management is like a very important uh, career option now like there are a lot of opportunities so uh, the next question that i would like to ask is what are the five significant skills that you think is required to become a risk manager or work in the risk management uh, vertical the five skills which are required uh, to be a successful risk manager or to basically work into risk management department right uh, so i think it's very easy uh, first is domain knowledge second is some kind of an analytical mind you require right third is problem solving capability okay fourth is somewhat like technical skill you require in terms of excel uh, and uh, fifth one which i specifically feel is the communication yeah so these are the five things which are most important if you want to basically uh, work into risk management department or to be a successful risk manager so domain knowledge why domain knowledge is important because uh, unless and until you have domain knowledge uh, with respect to risk management as well as with respect to the company you are working into you will not be able to perform properly so domain knowledge of risk is at most important what kind of risk you are dealing with be it be operational risk be it be investment risk or a kind of a enterprise risk so one is domain knowledge of risk is important and second uh, is basically domain knowledge with respect to your company what kind of products your company is dealing with what kind of processes the company follows uh, the knowledge about that is also important unless and until you know your company better you will not be able to perform or you will not be able to basically provide uh, the view or find out the risk uh, with respect to that company uh second aspect i i talk about or the second most significant quality is analytical skill so lot of our mind share goes into analyzing thing risk management may look like a kind of a uh, say uh, very uh, attractive and a kind of a simple job but that is not what it is it requires lot of analytical skill whatever data you have what kind of analysis analytics you can perform what kind of risk you can find out from that data is important so you should have that kind of analytical blend uh, and you need to develop that particular quality to analyze uh, a kind of data which is pre in pre in in front of you uh, unless and until you will not be able to analyze the data you will not be able to uh, take a good meaning out of it and third quality which i talk about is again related to uh, the second quality uh, that is technical quality technical quality in the sense you should have some kind of a technical knowledge with respect to uh, uh, excel or with respect to the quantitative finance so nowadays uh, uh, terms like python uh, Uh, some 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 kind of a VBA tool, some kind of SQL queries are becoming popular. Why it is popular? Because you you deal with a hell lot of data or big data. Unless and until you know how to use that particular data and uh, take a real meaning out of that particular data, you will not be able to provide a complete view, or you will not be able to uh, find out real risk from that data. so data analytics requires some kind of technical expertise with respect to uh, uh, technical uh, skills uh, fourth skill which i talk about is problem solving so it's a job of a risk manager to highlight the risk as well as to solve that problem so you should not be only the risk identifier but you should also be the risk solver basically you should also work as a risk manager so as the term goes it's a risk manager so you should 
be able to provide solution as well along with the risk so that is why, why this quality is also important and the fifth and utmost important quality is communication this goes for each and every domain uh, likewise for risk management also unless and until you will not be able to communicate your risk properly to the management to the person you are dealing with or to the uh, head of the department you are working with uh, you will not be able to uh, basically uh, do the justice to the job that you are performing and you will not be able to make meaning out of it. So these are the five qualities basically I wanted to highlight Nitish uh, with respect to, uh, to for, for becoming a successful risk manager. Right, right. Very well said actually. So the uh, next question that I would like to ask uh, is how do you explain risk to stakeholders? I, I definitely think that that is like something is not a very easy job. <laughs> so again, yeah, you are very right uh, that uh, it requires uh, some kind of qualities uh, to explain the risk to the stakeholder. Right. Uh, it requires some kind of awareness creation also uh, in the mind of the stakeholder to becoming aware about what risk is and unless and until they are not aware about what is risk they will not be able to understand that thing so first and foremost thing is what is important over here is uh, you need to create awareness about risk what kind of triggers they need to look for what kind of uh, areas they can explore what kind of uh, pain points they can highlight or right. what kind of things they can highlight it to us secondly in terms of explaining the risk i think uh, the qualities which, which we were speaking uh, speaking about uh, communication is very important so you need to uh, basically first understand the stakeholder what kind of function he is into what kind of processes he is following what kind of day uh, to day job he is doing uh, you need to plan your communication. You also need to understand that particular process right. and then you can uh, basically sit with that particular uh, stakeholder and you can explain him. Uh, see, these are the things that I found a kind of a danger or kind of a problem creator or a kind of a gray area for your department. Right. Uh, being a subject matter expert, what you feel about these areas? Are those areas sufficient or you feel uh, there are another areas also could be a probable risk areas. Right. Uh, so if you do this kind of conversation with your stakeholder, obviously he will open up or he will think about, okay, these are the five areas that he is highlighting me as a risk. Uh, so being a subject matter expert, I am dealing day in and day out into this, uh, my function. True. So being a subject matter expert, what kind of risk I am facing or what kind of pain pain areas I am facing, I should be able to highlight it. Right. And once he highlights it, it's a kind of a combined activity or combined job right. that you need to do. You need to think about what kind of uh, probability that particular event, uh, pro probability of uh, that risk happening right. and what kind of impact that risk can create. True. So, and you may also uh, run some kind of a hypothetical scenarios with that stakeholder. You may say that what is the probability of happening this event or this risk? Do you see one? So, do you see this happening in your function or right. have you seen this kind of risk happening in the industry right. or at somewhere else? Uh, maybe not in the same industry, maybe into another, another industry. industry. Right. So, that way you can start the conversation so once you will establish the conversation in this way obviously you will be able to communicate the risk as well as uh, the message uh, to how to look for a risk right. very properly right. or in a fruitful manner basically so sandeep uh, as you are part of the asset management industry so uh, i would like to understand what are the different uh, risk categories or verticals in an asset management company so, uh, be it the asset management company or any other company, the risk categories will remain same. Okay. Uh, so, risk categories are uh, basically operational risk, investment right. risk, market risk. Right. Uh, within operational risk, you have your technology risk, cyber security risk. So, these categories will not change irrespective of the company. Uh, okay, there are certain sets of risk which are not applicable to certain firms. So, for example, if it is a manufacturing company not using the technology that much or may, maybe not using the systems that much, uh, technology risk may not be uh, applicable to them. Okay. But a kind of asset management company who is heavily leveraged on the technology using websites, applications, 
may be more applicable to the asset management company. Right. But in terms of verticals, uh, we have I means uh, if I need to actually specify uh, three, uh, I would uh, basically classify those uh, into three different verticals. Okay. So first is operational risk. Second uh, would be investment risk. Right. And third, I will call as enterprise risk. So operational risk will cover all your operational risk areas. It can happen within the investment function, it can happen within operation function, it can even happen into administration function or HR function. Right. So operational risk is associated with all the functions. Investment risk is specific to investment department, which basically deals with market risk, liquidity right. risk, credit risk, and enterprise risk. So enterprise risk deals with policies, procedures, BCP plans. So those are basically your enterprise risk that you need to cover. Correct. So insurance is one area basically that is your enterprise risk, enterprise level risk. Right. So these are the broad categories that, uh, not categories, but these are the broad verticals. Verticals. Which are basically part of asset management industry and categories will remain same across be it be asset management company or any other company. So next what we would like to understand is uh, what do you mean by uh, risk probability and risk impact? Okay, so uh, basically these are the terms that we deal day in and day out. Okay. Uh, risk probability is nothing but uh, when you talk about risk probability, you are basically judging uh, the chance of happening that event or uh, event. Basically. Yes. Or, or basically you are judging the likelihood of happening of that particular event. Right. Uh, that may be so for, I, I will go this way. That when you discuss the risk with the uh, respective stakeholder, uh, you will ask a natural question to him. What is the probability or what is the chance of this risk happening within your department, within Correct. your function? Correct. Uh, whether it is one in a thousand transaction, one in a year, one in a week, one, one in a month, that way. So it's like you, it's a subjective thing that you are trying to judge the occurrence of the event. Right. So occurrence is nothing but the probability. Yes. And impact. So obviously, when you are doing the, uh, uh, when you are uh, talking about the risk uh, probability, you are also concerned about the impact of the risk. Absolutely. So impact is nothing but what kind of damage it may create right. to basically your function or your company. So in case that even materializes, what kind of financial damage or non-financial damage it may create to, in, uh, to the company. Correct. That is the impact. So damage may be in terms of uh, say, uh, inter so damage may be in terms of say rupees or maybe in terms of uh, non-financial things yeah. I talked about. So non-financial may be a yes. kind of a warning from regulator. So those are also important for us. So True. the impact may be anything to so maybe reputational damage also. Correct. So that is also an impact yes. to the company. So these are the two things basically with respect to uh, risk probability and risk impact. So who does uh, risk assessment in your team? <laughs> so obviously. Uh, Risk assessment is being done by the risk team. Right. So, uh, risk assessment is something uh, which requires some kind of a specialized skill. So, when you are performing the assessment, you are trying to judge the probability of the event as we spoke and the impact of the event. So, uh, it is done by risk management team, but it is always done in consultation with the respective st stakeholders. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, when we do the risk assessment, we always involve the stakeholders. We take him through each and every risk. We try to identify what is the likelihood and what is the impact that risk can create. Right. And then we try to assess that risk in terms of uh, by, by, by putting the uh, what kind of control he is having uh, with respect to that risk. So unless and until uh, we are aware or not aware about what kind of controls uh, the stakeholder is already having with respect to that risk, risk right. assessment will not be a foolproof exercise. Okay. So we also need to provide due care or due attention to the kind of controls that is in existence with respect to the risk. So once you do this particular exercise, right. basically uh, uh, you will be able to find out uh, what kind of uh, uh, what kind of severity that risk is having. So obviously 
in order to reach to that stage risk assessment is all about you need to define your risk into different categories okay. and also you need to rate your risk whether it is a low risk medium risk or high risk yes. so assessment is done in order to identify these two things what what risk category it belongs to and what kind of risk rating it carries okay so basically it's done by risk management team or risk management uh, p- person who is part of risk management team and uh, obviously in consultation with the respective department so once the risk is assessed who defines the risk mitigation strategy so a uh, risk mitigation strategy is nothing but the risk treatment correct so once the risk is assessed yes so uh, we need to basically find out what to do with that particular risk correct so in order to uh, basically deal with that particular risk uh, we i i follow and it's a globally accepted principles as well uh, mata principle okay so it is called as mata right not the ma but <laughs> mata so mata right so m goes for manage the risk a goes for uh, uh, accepting the risk right t goes for transferring the risk right and again a goes for avoiding the risk okay so once it is assessed then you need to decide uh, so this is important step for the all the medium and high risk uh, okay this may not be that much important step for the low risk uh, okay so uh, wherever it is a uh, say uh, Uh, high or medium risk right. you need to decide whether you want to uh, how you want to manage or mitigate that risk so either you need to manage manage in terms of by putting say additional controls right. how you are going to manage uh, by say preventive controls or detective control or reactive controls okay uh, it can be a systematic control it can be a manual control like right. say simple baker checker or some kind of a reconciliation that you can build till the risk is not manageable then you need to go for the second letter that is the second letter says accept the risk uh, acceptance of the risk is comes naturally uh, so basically uh, so if it is not manageable uh, then you need to think about whether the risk is acceptable to you or not uh, considering your risk appetite or right. the considering the goals the company want to pursue okay uh, if the risk is not manageable neither acceptable then you need to go to third letter that is t t says transfer the risk so transfer of risk is basically nothing but you need to look out for the opportunity uh, in terms of say uh, transferring the risk to the insurer by by way of say procuring insurance, insurance. or right. by by say uh, hedging the risk or by outsourcing the risk whatever right. way is feasible for that risk and even after that if you feel the risk which you have identified is neither acceptable nor manageable not transferable then you don't have any choice but to avoid the risk Correct. but again this decision need to be taken by the business uh, whether they really want to avoid that risk uh, sometimes what happens that it provides some kind of an opportunity where so, you don't want to avoid that risk but you or uh, you want to pursue that opportunity Correct. in that case you may do some kind of a cba or cost benefit analysis absolutely uh, with respect to that risk and then accordingly decision can be taken sure. whatever risk we are going to take whether it is going to contribute any value or not yes. if it is not going to contribute any value Correct. and it is not fitting into any of the four filters uh, three filters that we have discussed then four filters say that avoid the risk so now that we have understood uh, risk assessment we have also understood risk mitigation the next question would be like that how do you improve the risk management process yeah obviously it's a good question actually right. uh, so uh, risk management is not a static process Correct. it's a dynamic process absolutely the way the business changes the technology changes the product changes uh, the processes changes within the uh, business or within the company of course there is a requirement to uh, change the risk management process also or to update the risk management process also so it's a dynamic process you need to keep your eyes and ears open right. uh, with respect to what is happening in the market what is happening within your organization what kind of uh, indicators or what kind of lessons you have learned from your past, past. within your company yes. or what kind of lessons you you have learned from your peers 
Right. So that gives you enough indicators about what kind of changes, what kind of improvements are required uh, in your risk management framework or in your risk management process. True. Uh, once you do that thing, and once you actually, uh, I particularly um, call this particular thing as a horizon scanning. Okay. So horizon scanning within the company, horizon scanning outside the company. Right. So once you do this thing, you will be able to find out a good potential points uh, which will basically warrant you to check, go and check back your risk management process and policy and it will always uh, basically lead it to some or the other kind of improvement into yeah. the risk management process. As you rightly mentioned, uh, risk is a very dynamic area so it, uh, it skips on changing, a lot of new developments are happening. Right. So how does one keep uh, oneself abreast with the new developments in the arena. This again is related to your first, uh, previous question. That right. you it's a dynamic thing. So uh, it's basically investing your, in yourself uh, in order to upskill. Right. Uh, so if I want to upskill myself, basically I need to perform certain things. Uh, so if one really wants to know about what kind of developments are happening uh, in risk management domain, then uh, reading is one of the things that Absolutely. you need to read different literatures which, which are basically risk management related. You can also read blogs of uh, famous risk management personalities or professionals. Uh, second thing is uh, you may also listen to the podcast right. or kind of a audio video of say of different risk management professional personalities. Uh, third thing goes like this is basically you can also attend various seminars, conference or risk events. Yes. Nowadays, those are th those are the things which are happening. Earlier, it was not there in uh, Indian market or in our industry basically. Right. So nowadays, people are uh, taking that, those kind of initiatives and okay. basically arranging those kind of conferences, seminars with respect Correct. to risk management. You can attend those uh, risk management seminars. And uh, the other benefit of that seminar is also you get to network. Uh, with different risk management pro profession, uh, professionals right. who are pertaining to different different industries. Right. So there may be possibility when you are networking with them, you come to know various uh, other developments which are happening within their industry, right. which may provide some or the other view about what kind of developments are happening with, uh, with respect to risk management in their industry. There may be possibility of relating that developments into your industry. Correct. So you can basically update yourself. Correct. So these are the couple of things that one may basically explore in order to stay abreast in uh, with respect to risk management uh, uh, risk management related developments. Then again as a risk manager though this is a general question uh, so how do you how do you reduce risk of errors in, a, in your work? Okay so uh, reducing errors in the work I think there is no one one size fit approach available. I don't have any magic stick available which will basically reduce the errors ahead for. So, uh, in order to reduce the errors, there are lot of tools and techniques available. Uh, one may fit to one risk, may not fit to other risk. So, that kind of things are there. But the general approach which I follow and which I think uh, anybody will follow will be able to reduce the errors or the potential errors uh, up to great extent. So the general approach is like that, uh, always fo follow the SOPs, whatever right. SOPs the uh, organization has laid down, uh, always follow the checklist, Right. always exercise the control wherever possible, right. or wherever it is documented or wherever you feel, uh, so uh, wherever would be a wrong term, always follow the control would be the right term, so always follow the control mechanism uh, and uh, always ask question. So whenever in doubt, ask question, ask question to yourself, ask question to your seniors. Right. In case you are not uh, comfortable with processing that transaction or doing something, escalate the things, discuss the thing, those are the things you can do. And these are the general things. One of the other thing that may basically reduce the potential errors is awareness creation within the right. So within the organization, till the time you will not create awareness with respect to risk. What is risk? If the employee is not aware about what is risk, he will not be able to talk about risk or he will not be able to find those kind of 
indicators so awareness creation is again a very important thing Correct. if you create an environment in which everyone is aware about what kind of triggers what kind of signals he need to look about with respect to risk right then i think your job is done uh, right. you will be able to find out those risks and you will be actually people will come to you or different stakeholder will come to you and highlight those risks proactively okay uh, what part of your job as a risk manager do you find uh, most challenging okay <laughs> so in fact the profession is challenging yeah absolutely <laughs> so it's a kind of a fire fighting job right <laughs> right so basically we yeah, always yeah. need always. to be alert about what is happening how it is happening uh, what can go wrong where it can go wrong how it can go wrong a kind of a mindset we carry when we perform our duty so of course the profession is challenging so there are different different uh, verticals that we deal in like operational risk right. investment risk kind of right. risk uh again uh, challenges comes in two ways one uh, from which background you are coming if you are not having particular background uh, of say investment risk Correct. then investment risk will be a kind of a challenging job for you right visa visa person who is coming from the investment risk background similarly goes for the operational risk but between the two if i need to compare i think investment risk is a challenging job the kind of technology changes the kind of instruments are getting added in the market uh, different types of products that right. we deal in right. investment risk is the most challenging thing Correct. and that is what we are here for to face those challenges and help the stakeholder to mitigate the risk right now a very important question uh, there are a lot of people who aspire to become risk manager right so what what advice you would give to people who aspire to work in risk management or become risk managers okay so of course uh, the risk management is the fast growing profession Absolutely. and a very critical role also right uh, so in order uh, to pursue that career i think uh, the advice would be sharpen your knowledge first domain knowledge right. uh, pursue some course with respect to risk management if you want to pursue uh so that you gain the respective domain knowledge uh right uh, also uh, we talked about different qualities uh, right. which may help them so uh, try to work on those qualities and right. uh, inculcate those habits or those uh, qualities within you and right. uh, once you do that i think there are ample opportunities available in the market okay. and it is fast growing profession right. so opportunities are going to multiply only correct so once you have the domain knowledge uh, coupled by a uh, say proper degree right uh, it will only add value to the organization right. wherein you going wherein wherever you are going to work absolutely uh, so be an asset to the organization wherever you are going absolutely so to do that you need to do something or you need to shell out your time okay. and invest yourself into the risk management domain or risk management related Uh, literature books courses correct and then you can go for correct so on that on that line actually so i mean any particular course or literature that uh, you would like to suggest for people who want to work in risk management or who want to develop more skills in risk management okay so there are lot of courses are available right. uh, i am not sure about the indian version of the courses but uh, the globally recognized course is frm financial risk manager right. which is basically done uh, which is basically uh, uh, run by global association of risk professional gap right. usa uh, the second course is basically prm uh, right. professional risk manager which right. is uh, run by uh, institute called pri mia premia premia yes. and i think you also have couple of courses for risk management True. so that also can be explored if somebody would like to gain that knowledge and who, who is really interested in pursuing a risk management career you may also suggest some of the courses because yeah, i have come across very nice courses that your institute is also running correct so one one of the course people can look at is a, a course called certificate program in uh, quantitative finance and risk management uh, where we cover all the aspects of risk both uh, the theory as well as the practical modeling aspects as well so yes we do also have a course uh, in risk management so on that note uh, we come to the end of uh, this session and uh, 
This was like a wonderful, very insightful session, Sandeep. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing all your thoughts and insights. I'm sure people uh, who aspire to work in risk management or even people who are working in the risk management industry, they all will uh, find this information like, to be very, very useful. And uh, so we would be conducting a lot of this kind of sessions uh, as a part of this IQF Power Chat series. Keep following us. We are, we will be posting this uh, chats in our uh, different social media pages, in our website. So keep, keep, uh, keep track of us, keep following us and we will see you in the next chat. Thanks to you as well for inviting me uh, and giving no, no, this no, opportunity please, to uh, basically come here and discuss and uh, provide insight with respect to risk management. And I really enjoyed your question. Uh, yeah, we Thanks too, a lot. We too. Enjoyed Thanks a lot. lot. Thank you. And all the best to IAQF. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much.